uh, in the book of for the epistle that was written to the Romans in chapter 8 verse 28 thank you chapter 8 verse 28 very familiar scripture it says and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose and we know that all things work together for good to those who first love God and second those who are called according to his purpose this is a very familiar scripture one that is often quoted in church but today in the 21st century church I believe that we have a misunderstanding of this particular scripture and the reason why I say we have a misunderstanding of this particular scripture because even when this scripture is quoted this scripture is sometimes often misquoted that there are words at it like and we know that all things work together for the good so we can think that this text only relates to those that are good or we can often think that good things come about for those who love God and for those who are called according to his purpose but this particular scripture here is one that says that result is more important than process result is more important than process the scripture tells us that all things work together all of the things that work together is the process the result of the process is good so all things the scripture does not say that all good things it does not say that all bad things it says that all things the process of all things work together for good so the 21st century church we like to focus on the process and we forget about the result many preachers nowadays have this prosperity gospel which which they like to preach but I'm here today to tell you that the quote-unquote prosperity gospel is a one that misleads the people of God because it is one that leads us to believe or leads us to think that all good things work together for good so when the process of all things come about and we see that bad things or things that we may not necessarily like comes within the process that it's not God working so we relate the good things that happen in our lives to God and the bad things that happen in our lives to the enemy but the text says that all things work together meaning the things of God and the things of the enemy work together for good the church today we have this notion we have this mentality that whatever suits our comfort level is God and whatever does not suit our comfort level is the enemy it's a big misrepresentation so now I like to, for you to turn with me to the gospel according to John chapter 13 <clears throat> reading from verse 18 to 30 
I do not speak concerning all of you. I know whom I have chosen, but that the scripture may be fulfilled. He who eats bread with me has lifted up his heel against me. Now I tell you before it comes that when it does come to pass, you may believe that I am he. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who receives whomever I send receives me. And he who receives me receives him who sent me. When Jesus said these things, he was troubled in his spirit and testified and said, Most assuredly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Then the disciples looked at one another, perplexed about whom he spoke. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom, one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore mentioned to him to ask who it was of whom he spoke. Then leaning back on Jesus' breast, he said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, it is he to whom I shall give a piece of bread when I have dipped it. And having dipped the bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Now after the piece of bread, Satan entered him. Then Jesus said to him, what you do, do quickly. But no one at the table knew for what reason he said this to him. For some thought because Judas had the money box that Jesus said to him, buy these things we need for the feast. Or that he should give something to the poor. Having received the piece of bread, he then went out immediately and it was night. And it was night. Today I will speak to you very briefly from the topic of do it quickly. Do it quickly. As we just read the text, we see that after Jesus and the scriptures before, the verses before, that this particular text comes after Jesus would have served his disciples and washed the feet of his disciples. After he was done washing the feet of his disciples, he then said, I do not speak concerning all of you, meaning that when he spoke to the disciples, he was not speaking about every single one of them, but he specifically identified to all of the disciples that there is one one that would betray, betray him. There is one of them that would be, betray him and that is for the fulfillment of the scripture. It's very important and very key that we understand that the reason why Judas betrayed Jesus was for the fulfillment of the scripture. Not only is it uh, uh, important for us to understand this but Jesus mentioned this to the rest of his disciples because he he understood that he needed to tell them the reason why this must happen it was important for them to understand that the scripture must be fulfilled and someone must betray him for that to be fulfilled so Jesus had a clear understanding of his assignment first not only did he have a clear understanding of his assignment, he also had a clear understanding of the result of his assignment. So Jesus said to his disciples that one of you or one of you will, will betray me. One of you will betray me. So Simon asking who would it be? Then Jesus said, it is he to whom I shall give a piece of bread when I have dipped it. So Jesus told them who would or one would betray him. Not only did he tell them that one would betray him, he identified the one that would betray him. And having dipped the bread, he gave it to Judas. 
the son of Simon, and after the piece of bread, Satan entered him. So I really just want to work from, from verse 26 or through verse 26 and, and 27. The scripture says that Simon was the one to ask, who is it that would betray you? Jesus replied, the one that after I dip the bread and give it to him, that is the one that will betray me. The text goes on to say, after that moment, Satan entered Judas. Many would tell you that Jesus was speaking to his disciples when Jesus said, the one whom I have dipped the bread and then given it to, this is the one. But under the anointing of God, God said, no, I did not reveal this to the disciples. I actually revealed this to the enemy. Because at, after that very moment, the scripture tells us that uh, 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 Satan entered Judas. Satan entered Judas that very moment. It is very strange that Jesus would identify or reveal someone to Satan for Satan to enter that man. Very strange. Very strange. If you look at the title, the title says, Do It Quickly, which is a command. It is not something that is asked, it is something that is told or commanded of someone to do. So in verse 27, it says, uh, Jesus replied or said to him, what you do, do it quickly. A command was given for Judas, a command was given for Satan to do what you have planned to do it quickly. If you do not know the assignment for your life, you will not know the assignment for the lives of the people around you. And if you do not know the assignment for the people around you, you will not know how to command the people around you in their assignment as it relates to your assignment. I'll say it again. If you do not understand your assignment, you will not be able to understand the assignment of the people around you. And if you do not understand the assignment of the people around you, you will not be able to command the people around you in their assignment as it relates to your assignment. You got that? Makes sense? So Jesus tells the one to betray him to do what you have planned to do it quickly. To do it quickly. Jesus had a clear understanding of, uh, understanding of what his assignment was. So because he understood his assignment, he was able to understand the assignment for those around him. Once he was able to understand his assignment, he was able to understand the assignment for those around him. So being that he was able to understand the assignment for those around him, he was then able to command those around them in their assignment as it relates to his assignment. The reason why we are not fulfilling the God-given assignments over our lives is because we're not aware of the assignment. And we know that all things work together for good. 
So when Satan shows up in our life, we, we have this mentality that we rebuke Satan as opposed to commanding him. God never gave us the, the ability, God that never, never, never gave us the power to rebuke Satan, but he gave us the power and authority to command him. When, when, when Satan entered uh, Peter, Jesus responded and said, get behind me, Satan. That is a command. When Satan showed up to Jesus, when, when Jesus uh, was in the wilderness fasting for 40 days, 40 nights, Jesus' response to him was, do not tempt the Lord your God. That is a command. We do not have the responsibility of rebuking the enemy. We have the responsibility of commanding him. When we understand our assignment, we, we, we also understand the enemy's assignment for our life. And when we understand the enemy's assignment for our life, we can command the enemy what to do. But a lot of us, we get lost on the results. At, uh, uh, I'm sorry, get lost on the preparation as opposed to the results. We focus on the, on the preparation, what leads up to, as opposed to remembering the promise of the results. If he said that all things work together for good, it means that all things, it does not matter if Satan comes up in your life, if Satan enters someone, it does not matter what the enemy tries to do to you, that even what the enemy tries to do to you works together for good. But more than that, not only is it, is it that the enemy uh, uh, may have a plan, but you even command the enemy in his very own plan for your life. Jesus pinpointed the one that would betray him in the presence of Satan. Some of us, the reason why we can't move on to our next assignment is because we're too caught up in the process we're too caught up in what is going on as opposed to looking towards the future some of us when we understand the assignment for our life we will command the enemy not only to in his very own assignment but we will tell the enemy to hurry up some of us the very own reason why we have not prospered in our finances is because Satan has sometimes wanted to come up and cripple your finances but you refuse to allow him to do what he wants to do some of you have some business ideas some business plans and the reason why you cannot get them off the ground because you not have you have not hit rock bottom in your finances God's plans for some of you is to be at rock bottom in order for him to lift you up. But we're too concerned with the process as opposed to the results. In John chapter 9, there was a man who was born blind. A man who was born blind and the disciples saw this man and they said, or they asked Jesus saying, who sent this man or his parents? Jesus replied, neither this man nor his parents, but that the, that the works of God will be revealed in him. The disciples were more concerned with, with him being blind and how he got blind as opposed to why he was blind and the results to come from him being blind. Jesus told to his disciples the results of why he was blind or the outcome of him being blind, which is that the works of God be revealed in him. A lot of times we get too cut up, caught up on the who, what, when, where, why, and how that we forget about the results. I'm here to tell you today and encourage you today that you have the ability to command the enemy. You have the ability to tell the very own enemy what to do. Watch this, watch this. Jesus prayed 
for his disciples and he, he prayed uh, for, for he said he said uh, I pray that the, you keep them away from the evil one that's what Jesus prayed he prayed to keep the evil one away from them keep the evil one away from them this is this is this is very important keep the evil one away from them so we have people in church nowadays saying that oh the enemy cannot come to me because Jesus prayed to keep the evil one away from them I'm here to tell you that if the enemy does not show up in your life it means that you do not have Jesus or the Spirit of Christ in yours because the enemy does not show up to those that do not have Christ because he said to keep them away from the evil one he did not pray for the evil one to be kept away from him him meaning Jesus so if you have the, or the enemy ever shows up in your life it means that you have the spirit of Christ within you so when the enemy shows up in your life it's a clear sign that the Holy Spirit is residing within you clear indication so he prayed to keep them from the evil one but he never said to keep the evil one away from me so when the enemy shows up in your life you ought to thank God that he showed up and you ought to thank God that the enemy has a plan for your life because that means that he is in you So when you understand that God or the Spirit of God is residing within you, you understand that you didn't have the power, you didn't have the authority to command Satan. But when the enemy does not show up, you get yourself fixated, you get yourself caught, caught up on the good things of life. But I'm here to tell you that sometimes Satan can offer you the good things in life. He tried to even ex uh, offer Jesus all the kingdoms of this world. So we have a clear confusion, we have a clear misunderstanding of when God shows up and when Satan shows up in our lives. Because God shows up to meet our needs and Satan shows up to go against our needs. That's the mentality of the church. No, Satan shows up to meet the plans of God. Jesus gave Satan permission and the permission was do it quickly. And the reason why some of us are not producing results in our lives because we, not ha we have not commanded the enemy in our lives. We thank God when things go well. We thank God when, when the good things come upon us. And we curse and rebuke Satan when bad things come. We're missing, we're lacking the spirit of discernment in the church. We're not able to decipher when is God and when is the enemy. We're too caught up in, in our emotions, we're too caught up in what makes us feel as opposed to what God called us to do. Understand the assignment in your life. You will then be able to understand the assignment of the people around you. Not only will you be able to understand the assignment of the people around you, we, you will be able to assign the people around you. When you understand your very own assignment in life, you are able to assign people around you according to your assignment. Apostle London, there's no way that he could have started this ministry and built this ministry if he did not understand his assignment. When he was able to understand his assignment, he assigned leaders according to his assignment. He did not assign leaders according to whom he liked. 
He did not assign leaders according to what they were capable and able to do. When you understand your assignment, you are able to understand the assignment of those around you and you are able to assign those around you. And once you're able to understand their assignment and you're able to assign those around you, you can then command those around you. But when we lack understanding and assignment, we can never tell someone what to do. A popular term in the church nowadays is rebuke. It's a term that's easily tossed out. Everyone gets rebuked. Spirits get rebuked. So we rebuke people. We rebuke spirits. But I'm here today to tell you that people are rebuked. Spirits are commanded. People are rebuked. Spirits are commanded because to rebuke means to express sharp or stern disapproval. It means to reprimand. To rebuke someone means to express sharp or stern disapproval. To reprimand. So when someone does something that you do not approve us, approve us, you can approve of, you have the ability to rebuke them. But if the enemy shows up in your life and he does something that you don't approve us, you don't, you don't just say, I don't approve of this. You say, get out of my life. You command the enemy. You command the evil spirits. People are rebuked. Spirits are commanded. Jesus commanded the spirit of Satan. He rebuked his disciples. He rebuked his disciples many times in scripture, but he commanded the enemy whenever the enemy showed up in his life. We have to understand that people in our lives, when we disapprove of someone, when we disapprove of something, we have the ability to rebuke the people, but we command spirits. We command spirits. Is any of this making sense? Good. We command spirits. But just as you witnessed today, you can only command something with the spirit of God. The disciples never commanded the spirits. It was always Jesus that did so. So even when the enemy has a plan for your life, I'm here to remind you today that even those plans work together for good. That when you find yourself at rock bottom, it still works together for good. For good. Which means that the result is more important than the process. How you get to good does not matter. How you get to the end result does not matter. Nobody said it would be easy, but he said it would be good. So today, while my title is Do It Quickly, the quicker you allow the plans of the enemy to be fulfilled in your life, is the quicker you will see the manifestation of good in your life. So if you know that all things work together for good, then you ought to ask or command the enemy to do it quickly so that I can see the results of good in my life.
Amen. A lot of you have gone or gotten tired of the same old thing over and over and over again in church. But the Lord sent me here today to remind you that as long as you remain faithful to him, he will remain faithful to you. Amen. That he has not forgotten about us. That the prayers of Apostle London before he left for his glory to be with us, he is hearing us today. Amen. I honestly believe that I didn't have to even stand up here to minister today. After the Lord did what he did in this place today, I believe that was enough for a lot of us today. So let us just stand and let's, let's just give him some praise. Let's just give him some praise.